Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Turn, turn to Mark 8, would you, real quick? This is where Jesus had just taught them that he was going to die. In, in Mark 8, and we, we've actually gone to this passage. In fact, when I was in Arizona, John goes, could you teach Mark 8 with, with Peter at, at Caesarea Philippi and the whole who do men say I am and, and the resurrection thing? I said, he goes, it'll, it'll go with what we're doing on Wednesday nights. I'm like, um, okay. He goes, you know that part. I'm thinking, yeah, I know that part. I just taught it like a couple of weeks ago. Isn't that weird how the Holy Spirit has you... You know, I'm like, yeah, I know that part. And he told his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, uh, you know, they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah. And to Peter, who do you say I am? And what was Peter's response? You're the Messiah. You're the Christ. And he goes, good job, Peter. Matthew tells us this in his gospel. He says, um, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to Peter, but God's spirit revealed it. Now, I shared it when I was teaching this. I can just see Peter's head just swell up. You know, guys, did you hear that? I'm tuned in. I had a direct revelation from God. Of course, two minutes later, when Jesus says, I'm going to go and suffer and be killed, and the scribes and the, and the elders are, and the chief priests are going to reject me and beat me, and they're going to they're gonna crucify me and then bury me, and three days later I'll rise. What was Peter's answer to that? No. No way, Lord. By no means. No. God forbid. And what was Jesus' answer to Peter? Get thee what? Behind me, Satan. You know, you were tuned into God a minute ago, but you just tuned into the devil. And I got to share this at, 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 at his church there, at Calvary Tri-City, when I was there. I said, look, what's the difference? How can you go from having a a revelation from God one minute. You're Peter, the apostle. To having a revelation from downstairs. Does anyone relate to this, by the way? One moment you're doing really good in your walk, and the next minute you want to park the car on that guy because he cut you off in traffic. I mean, maybe not here in Kona, but on the mainland it's more challenging for your faith. They drive crazy there on the freeways. And, and you, your, your faith is tested. And you're like, man, I was doing so good. I had such a peaceful devotion at the house. And then I come out onto the roadways, just taking Papa to the doctor's office. And that jerk, you know, I was, I was having to do, God bless you. You need it. You drive like a maniac, you know. God bless you too, you know, and you, you know. They were everywhere. They all needed blessings. You know, it was weird because it's so easy to get to get bad revelations when we set our interest. Now, Jesus identified. He said, Peter, you're not setting your mind on the interest of God. You're setting your mind on the interest of what? Of yourself. As soon as we start looking toward ourselves, what about me? What do I get? What do I, your, your discernment is in the toilet. You're going to get messages from below. You want messages from above, you have to be willing to say, God, I want to do your will. Your will. What did Jesus say? He, he said, I don't even want to die. Lord, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but whose will? Thy will be done. We got to be going to God. God, I need you to do, help me do your will. And that's when we have good discernment. Well, Jesus went on and he said, guys, if anyone wishes to come after me, verse 34, Mark 8, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and let him follow me. Whoever wishes to save his life, verse 35, will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and for the gospel's sake, he will save it. You really want to gain your life? Lay it down. Lay it down for the gospel's sake. Now Jesus... He went on to tell them that there were those that would, would um, see even not death until they saw the kingdom of heaven revealed. 
Verse 1 of chapter 9, if you'll look at Mark 9, verse 1, Jesus was saying to them, Verily or truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste of death until they see the kingdom of God after it has come with power. And six days later, those of you Bible students know what happens. It's pretty good. They get a glimpse of a heavenly... Uh, anyone, if we had a time machine, would go with me to this event on this day, six days later? Because what happens? They go to the mount, Peter and James and John, along with Jesus. He brought his inner circle. And he brought them to that mountain, a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His garments became radiant and exceedingly white as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And <laughs> Elijah appeared to them along with Moses and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us build three tabernacles, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For it says he did not know what to answer because he became terrified. Good old wet socks Peter, open mouth, insert foot. I mean, Peter is so freaked out. He's like, uh, uh, it's good we're here. Um, well, man, let's make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. I'm like, what are you going to do, Peter, charge a mission? I mean, this is stupid. Jesus, Jesus actually tells him, listen, it, it, well, the next part is the best. This is why I want to be there. Then a cloud formed over them, and it overshadowed them, and the voice came out of the cloud. And those of you who know this story, whose voice do you think this is? This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to what? Him. Probably the three most profound words in the gospel is listen to Jesus. Listen to him. They were there with him. They saw him talking to Moses and Elijah. In the, by the way, this account is in the other Gospels too. And they tell us in one of the other Gospel accounts that Matthew tells us that, that the Moses and Elijah were kind of prepping Jesus, getting, ready, getting him ready for what was coming. They knew he was going to go get beaten. They knew he was going to be crucified. And, and, and they appear to him before he goes to the cross. But the part I like is, who would go with me if we could just step in for Peter or James or John? I don't want to be Peter because he says something stupid. I'll be John <laughs> for the day. Anyone else want to go? Want to go be James? You know, we can, we can just slip in for those guys. You guys stay back. We'll go. I mean, you get to hear the voice of God from heaven. Is this good? I, I could dig this. You get to see Jesus go from his earthly body to where he is, the word transfigured means transformed into his heavenly state. Anyone would like a glimpse of, does anyone else think this would be cool to go be part of that day? Just to, even if we couldn't stand up, but we'd just stand back, just to watch. And see Jesus go into this, it says him bright, so bright. No longer on earth could make his garments that bright. Can you just see this? I mean, all of a sudden he's bright, shining. And there's Moses and Elijah talking with him. Anyone else think this would be cool? Just for, you know, faith builder for the day. We're going to have, you know, instead of going on a retreat somewhere, we're just going to jump in a time capsule and shoot back. I mean, you got all this sci-fi stuff, right? We're just going to get one of the machines and program it to this day. Pop up and there we're just going to watch Jesus change. Do you think this would build your faith at all? I know mine would. Because everything that happened to him, remember, he's the forerunner. He's the firstborn amongst the resurrection. He went first. What's going to happen to Well, how about Moses and Elijah? They showed up, right? They had already been dead a long time ago. Those are old guys in the Old Testament. And there they are, all shiny and bright, talking to Jesus. Does anyone think this would be cool? You know, when it comes to our heavenly body, I love teaching kids about this because they're like, they got all the questions. So what are we going to look like? Are we going to know each other? Are, are we going to be able to tell who's who and all that? Well, 
John Mark is writing this, and he got his info from who? By the way, Mark wasn't one of the apostles, but he hung out with one of them. Anyone remember who? Peter. <clears throat> Peter's telling him. We were there, <laughs> and I don't know why Peter is obligated to tell this part, but I said we should build three tabernacles. One for you, and one for Moses, one for Elijah. Kind of a stupid idea now that I think about it, but you know, I... I, I didn't know what to say. I, I was freaked out, okay? Look, it says, for he's... <laughs> doesn't it just say right there that he said he was afraid? If you don't think our glorified bodies are going to be, like, super statement, I mean, people will be, whoa! The apostles themselves were standing there, and Jesus changes in front of them, and they are like, I don't know what to say. He is shiny. Right. I mean, anyone looking forward to an upgrade like this? A new body. We read in the book of Revelation, the body that we're going to have. There's no more pain. There's no sorrow in heaven. The only tears are tears of joy. I, I think Revelation 21.4, we get a body that's immortal, incorruptible. Is anyone up for this besides me? No pain? I mean, my joints won't hurt anymore. I'm going to be able to move without cricking and cracking. And I, I don't know if I'll still feel rain like I do. I, I have really good built-in barometers. The rain is coming in all my hands, my, all the years of gymnastics, all my joints stiffen. And if it's coming real hard, it's like someone's driving little ice picks into my, between my knuckles. Don't fight, kids. That's what happens later. You know, you, you mess up your joints. And then the rain comes and you hurt. And you think, when I was young, they used to tell me, you're going to hurt from all those dismounts off the high bar. And I was like, no way! Watch this, I'll do a triple back. Stupid. Today I'm like, oh, too many triple backs. Oh, oh the knees, they still hurt. By the way, that's one of the ways I know when Jesus comes... And next week, we're going to study. Paul even is going to explain that Christ will come again. And when we see him, it says we'll be made, what? Like him. In a moment, a twinkle of an eye. It's going to be that quick. This, this body, this corruption, this is going to put on incorruption. This mortal will be swallowed up by immortality. I'm going to have a new body when I see Christ. By the way, this is just a safeguard in case some of you run into one of those wackos that's you know, there's some guys, they dress up like Jesus today. And they tell you, I'm Jesus. We had one years ago show up at our service. I've shared this before. He sat in the back while we were doing worship. And we're all worshiping the Lord, right? And he's standing back there. He's in a robe. He's got the Hollywood hair, everything. I mean, the guy looked like he'd be the Hollywood Jesus. He's in the back of our service going, I accept your praises. Oh yeah, during the service. And I was freaking out some of our Sunday school teachers. And one of the ladies came, she was a new, one of the ladies who came with one of the Sunday school teachers was a new Christian. She goes, is that guy, is that, he, is Jesus really here at your church? I said, he's here in our church, but that's not Jesus. And she said, well, how do you know that? I said, that's a really good question. What, and I pulled the Bible out and turned to 1 Corinthians 15, where I'm going to show you next week. When we see him, we'll be made what? Like him. I said, we're going to be swallowed up by life. In that very moment, when you see the Lord, guys, this is, is that going to be a good day? I mean, you, your body, this, all the pains that you had, is going to be all this, all this death that goes on in this whole shell of a body is going to be swallowed up by life. And you're going, to have, you're going to have joints that work without creaking and cracking. You're going to have no more pain inside. I walked right up to the fella. And I brought the ladies with me so that they would know. And I said, listen, sir, you are in a delusion. You, you, have, a, you have a lying spirit. You are not Christ. How dare you say that to me? He tells me. I'm like, I dare say it easily. You're a false messiah. And Jesus said that in the last days there will be many that come acting like they're him. You're not him. And I can prove it. And I looked at the ladies and said, ladies, listen. When I see Jesus, the Bible says, my body will be changed in a twinkle of an eye. If that was the Messiah, 
my body wouldn't still hurt. My joints would work. And to prove it, I go, look, girls, my, all those dismounts at the high bar, they left me with this bad problem in my knees. Every time I squat down, they make a kind of loud popping noise. So I said, girls, I didn't have to even say get close. I just said, listen. And I went, oh. and I said, hear that? You, sir, are, you're deceived. You're not Jesus. He says, no one's ever said that to me. I said, well, I hope you repent of your sin and come to follow the true Jesus. And he was shocked. No one had ever called him on it. He'd been going from church to church in this delusion that he was the Messiah. If you know this truth, that when you see the Lord, you're going to be changed, and some guy shows up and you don't get changed, what's it tell you? You ain't the Lord. Do you think I should teach that to new believers, by the way, just to like kind of get them prepped? I mean, are there weirdos out there playing like they're Jesus? Yes. Unfortunately, it seems like there's more of them. They're, cut, they're like breeding. They're coming out of the woodwork. And we need to arm the believers with the truth because Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth shall set you what? Free. I don't want new believers being sucked in. I mean, they they're just have a heart. They want to see God. And they want to worship God. And some guy shows up and says, I'm him. You know, if you're new in the faith, you don't know stuff. You don't know unless we tell them. We have to, you know, we have to share what, what the Word of God teaches so people can be safeguarded from these things. And that's one of the most beautiful things, I think, like just kind of like one of the side things that comes along with just knowing that we're going to have a new body is as a safeguard when these guys, these false guys show up and say they're the Messiah, and I go, you're not it. But when the true Messiah comes, all you guys are going to look over at me and go, oh, is he? You're looking more better. And I might look at you and think the same thing. We're all going to get upgrades. Paul says this tent is going to be swallowed up by a mansion. I'll teach more about that next week. It's such a cool thing. If you, if you can, please read to the end of the chapter. We'll pick up there in 1 Corinthians 15. We'll learn about the, the return of the Lord and some of the stuff that's going to happen. And there's a few more things I didn't have time this morning. I, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to indulge in because the kids ask me like details about our heavenly body. They like to know like stuff. Th does the Bible tell us? Those of you've been in the Lord a while, does the Bible teach us any clues? Yeah, and they're exciting. Once you see them, you're like, oh man, I can't wait. That new body sounds good, man. I mean, the stuff you can do with it, pretty slick. We'll go over a few of those things next week as we study the end of this chapter in 1 Corinthians 15. Let's pray, shall we? Father in heaven, I thank you for your word, the, the great hope that it brings, the safeguard, Lord, it brings as we learn your truths. And Lord, I pray for those with those deceptive spirits going around saying that they are your son, trying to, trying to get men to follow after them and not after you. Lord, just wake up those false guys. Give them a little spiritual gib slap for me, Lord, and straighten them up. Get them on the right track. And Lord, safeguard all of our believers, Lord, with your truth. We ask you, you said, sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. Lord, we want to be sanctified by your word. Let it guard our hearts and minds as we go forth from here into this next week, Lord, as we venture into it. You know what lies ahead for us. We ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us into those things. Deliver us from temptation, Lord. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. As we face this upcoming week, Lord, give us what we need. We ask it in Jesus, your precious Son's name. His name we pray. And all God's people who agree with me said, Amen. Amen. Would you guys? Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.